y'all doing? Um, my name is Dawn Simmons. And uh, let's see where we are. One more time or what? Can I do it again? Oh. I think I backed this up a little too okay. far. There we go. There we go. All right. Push this a little bit more this way. Dawn Simmons, and uh, I am mama to these nine right here. Uh, this was my oldest son's wedding, and um, in 2016, uh, my oldest son ran. So this is um, my whole crew right here. This is my family. And here's a little more recent picture. It's me and my husband, Ray, and Ren, Katie, Shay, Rhett, Carly, Kyle, and Lindy, Christopher, and Cameron. Uh, Lindy, Christopher, and Cameron are no longer with us. On December 17th of 2021, we were on our way home from Christopher's basketball game in Monroe. Um, Heading back on I-49 when a drunk driver hit us head on. Uh, Christopher's little girlfriend, Marissa, was in the car with us. It was me, Marissa, and Lindy, Christopher, and Karen. Marissa and I were the only two survivors. Lindy, Christopher, and Cameron lost their life that night. It was stolen by one man's decision to get behind the wheel drunk. So just tell you a little bit about Lindy. Lindy was the most creative person I have ever met in my life. She was 20 years old at the time of the crash. Um, she was a phenomenal photographer. She videoed, uh, documented, and photographed everyday life. You know, it wasn't just the big events like weddings and graduations and birthdays and things like that. She videoed everyday life. Um, she would, uh, her and Cameron would go to the grocery store. Lindy would set up a little camera on the canned goods, find them a little spot, do a little dance, and then move on to the next aisle. You know, we, we have so many videos of them in Walmart. Um, her and Cameron had gone to the eye doctor. Cameron's got the little thing over her eye. Lindy's on the down low film and she says, this girl can't read that because Cameron was struggling to read the little signs. Um, just so many everyday videos. Uh, Lindy was a sophomore at Nichols. Um, she had just landed her dream job. She, in November of 21, she had got hired as the Nichols photographer. She was so excited because she had just gotten, we had just bought her like very expensive uh, new camera equipment. So she was so excited to try it out. Uh, she was supposed to start that job in January of 22 for the spring semester, but that day never came for her. Um, she was a person who loved life and lived it to the fullest. Um, if you were gonna spend the day with Lindy, you were gonna have a day of laughs. It's one of the things that I miss the most, is the laughter. It's so silent in my home now. Um, if you were with Lindy, you were definitely gonna be a victim of a camera whether knowingly or unknowingly. And it's one of the things that I treasure so much today is all the video and photographs that she took, never realizing how precious they would be to me. So uh, next we have Christopher. Christopher was um, 17 at the time of the crash. Christopher was gonna be valedictorian of his class. Uh, he was an amazing athlete. Uh, we were 
coming home from his basketball team, uh, his basketball game in Monroe, and he was awarded first team all state for basketball. He was also awarded the Golden Glove Award, uh, and he was gonna uh, be on the football team as well. Would have been this year for his senior year. He had never played football, but uh, they they wanted him to be the quarterback. He he was very very athletic. Um, uh, he was. Uh, striving to make a 32 on his ACT. Before the crash, his highest score was a 26. He told me, he said, Mom, I have about eight, eight or nine more times to take it. He said, when I, you know, for the Christmas break, he said, we need to get together so we can order some study guides. I am confident he would have achieved that goal. He wanted to be a software engineer. His older brother, Ren, is a software engineer and he wanted to follow in his footsteps. Uh, he was a remarkable young man. If I could have said, I want a son and I want him to be this, 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 and this, when I tell you Christopher checked every single box, um, he was so full of integrity. Um, if Christopher gave you his word, you, you could count on it. He was just um, just a truly, truly remarkable young man. And Cameron, 15 years old, y'all age, 41 days short of her 16th birthday, 41 days short of getting her driver's license. She was counting down the days. She had a little countdown app in her phone. Uh, she was the kindest child I have ever met in my life. When she saw people hurting, oh, it broke her heart. Uh, when we would leave Walmart, sometimes they have the little people with the signs down on their luck, needing a little money for food or whatever. If I didn't have money in my purse, Mom, go to the money machine. We have to help them. They may be hungry. I mean, it literally just hurt her heart when she saw people in need. Um, her and I, she was doing her practice drive and she had her permit. And her and I really spent a lot of extra time together that year because she wanted to do all her practice driving. So she would put her little playlist on before we would leave. And when I tell you, she would sing and sing and sing. She had the most beautiful voice. It's one of the things that I still struggle with today the most because I drive alone now because they're not here. And I look for her and I long to hear her little voice. We just recently came across one of her um, little videos she made in her Snapchat and um, it was her singing. So a lot of times when I'm driving, I'll put it in and I can hear her sing again. But she was just a kind, kind person. So that's just a little bit of background about each of them. This is um, a video of a head-on collision, not ours. This one at, it was at a much lower rate of speed than ours, but just to kind of give you an idea of how quickly these things can happen. slower rate of speed than ours. The drunk driver who hit us was doing between 80 and 90 miles an hour and we were doing 75 which was the speed limit. 75 was the speed limit. The drunk driver going the wrong way. Um, this is my car actually on the scene. You can see the firefighter and um, trying to do 
evaluate everything and get everything taken care of. I mean, there's nothing left in my car. I can go to that crash site today, and I promise you I will still find pieces of my vehicle. I mean, one man's decision. This was the result of it. Lindy was driving. I was in the front passenger seat. Christopher was behind me. Cameron was behind Lindy. And Marissa was in the middle. I don't think Lindy even had a chance to even evaluate what was going on. I have no memory of the crash. Marissa was sleeping. So we don't know. He was coming over an overpass, so he had got completely over the overpass, but there just was no time. I mean, at that rate of speed, you know, we'll never know exactly what the exact circumstances were, except that this was preventable. One man's decision has turned my family's life upside down. Every single area of our life has been affected by this. Our lives will never, ever be the same. And here's, uh, let's see, is this a video? Yes, this is just some video of the night of. You can see just all the commotion. I don't know if y'all are aware, five people were killed that night. My three children, so full of life, so young, hopes, dreams, just like y'all. I mean, they had their futures planned. They could have brought so much to this world. But because of one man's selfish decision, they're gone. Y'all see that little bit of light purple? That's Lindy. It took me months and months to be able to look at this video. It took them an hour and a half to get her out. She was killed instantly. Crash was at 9.01. She died at 9.01. <clears throat> Cameron at 10.33. And Christopher at 11.06. There are so many things that can be done to prevent this. Designated driver, Uber, cell phone, call someone. You know, the mindset today, unfortunately, is when people drink and drive, is they don't want to get caught. But guess who got caught that night? We did. Perfectly innocent family, doing nothing wrong, going to speed limit, seat belts. many things. You know, even distracted driving, cell phones. You know, if that's going to be a problem for you, just put it away before you get in the car. Get Life 360. Let your parents, your people, your friends know that if you're not answering the phone, check the Life 360. Get into these habits beforehand because I'm telling you these things happen so quickly. I never, ever thought that this would happen to my family. And I know each and every one of you think that that would never happen to me. But it can. You know,
you know, some things are out of your control. What happened to us was out of our control. We did nothing wrong that night. But I tell you what, with everything that is in your control, you have got to take advantage of everything and make decisions before y'all get behind the wheel of a car. These cars are heavy pieces of machinery. You can kill someone in, the, in a vehicle, and you can be killed. It happens so quickly. Simple decisions that you make beforehand can save your life and save you from these kind of consequences that you have to live with if you survive that you have to live with forever. The weight of carrying that, I, I just can't even imagine. It's just not worth it. And so many times, these things are preventable. That was my car before. This is where Cameron was sitting. The car did its job. Every airbag came out, every safety precaution. I had, it was a little 2017 Cadillac. It's a nice car, safe car, but physics I mean, can only withstand so much. So this is my lending. So crash was at 901. At about 930 that night, my husband gets a call from a paramedic and said, they said, we're here. Your wife has been in a bad accident. Uh, we are gonna try and get her stable enough to transport her to Lafayette General. If you can, please head to the hospital, you know, as fast as you can. And he said, well, hold, hold up, when, what about my kids? He said, we can't tell you any information about your kids. We have your wife, just please head to Lafayette General. So he did, so he called my oldest daughter and she headed to the hospital as well. So when they got here, they went to the uh, emergency room and they told them about me, told them about Marissa. Where's the kids? Y'all don't have Lindy, Christopher, and Cameron Simmons? No, we, we don't. Can y'all tell me where they are? No, we, we don't know. So they have no idea where the kids are. So my daughter is, want, is, you know, wants to let my husband stay with me and she wants to get to the kids because she doesn't want them to be alone. She wanted them to know that somebody's with them. So she tells her friend Allie, this is, my daughter Katie and her best friend Allie, they are texting, trying to, together, trying to figure out where the kids are. So she says, we can't find my siblings, only, only my mom and Marissa are here. The hospital can't say where they were taken. It's Lindy, a fatality, yes. Oh my God, Katie, I'm so sorry. Mom's ankles are broken and she's critical. Cameron and Christopher are critical. We think Lindy is gone, but no one can tell, excuse the language. Only Marissa and mom at Lafayette Gym. So they had heard on Facebook, a Facebook thing had come up and they said that there was a crash on I-49. Both the drivers had passed away. They knew Lindy normally drove for me. So they thinking, not wanting to believe it, just didn't want to believe that. But if anything, maybe we lost Lindy. So there was a police officer down uh, in the area where they were and he said look he said I don't I don't know I don't have any information where they are he said but my thinking is he said they were probably trying to get them here to Lafayette General 
they may have coded or whatever, and I'm thinking they diverted to Opelousas General. He said, unless you have anything else to go on, he said, my suggestion is maybe try to go there. So that's what they did, my, my daughter, her husband, and her mother-in-law. So they get to Lafayette General, and I mean, I'm sorry, Opelousas, and um, they tell the security guard what's what, and they, security guard brings him to a nurse and he says well what do your siblings look like what do your sisters look like and uh, she was trying to explain and she said well, let me just show you a picture so she showed him a picture of Lindy and Cameron and he said okay he said come with me so they bring him to a room walk in person in a white body bag My daughter is like, this can't be. So she's told her mother-in-law and her husband, she said, I, I can't look. She said, just, just tell me who it is. Praying that it's none of her siblings, that that was maybe a mistake or something. Unzip it. In the back of her mind, thinking, if anybody, it's Lindy. little baby 15 year old sister y'all age in a body bag she said her little face was beautiful she said it looked like she was sleeping she said are y'all sure y'all have done her and they said, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> when she came in, she was in such bad shape. She said there was really nothing we could do. So she tries to regroup and she starts thinking of the other two siblings. She said, well, what about my other sibling? <clears throat> she said, where, 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 where are they? And the nurse walked out and he comes back in and he says, um, there's a young gentleman at Bunky General who we think may be your brother. And uh, she said, oh, she said, thank God. She said, I need to get to him. She said, I know he's hurt. She said, but at least he's alive. The nurse did. I'm sorry, he didn't make it. So, in that moment, she finds out two of her siblings are gone. And he said, we're gonna need you to go to Bunky and uh, identify him as well. So she uh, asks the nurse, she says, well, what about my other sister, Lindy? She said, where is she? And he said, we just got a call and they're still trying to get her out the vehicle. And she said, okay, what mom, Martha? She said, I have got to go be with her. She said, I'll go identify Krista after. She said, but I gotta go, uh, I need to be with Lindy right now. And uh, she said, she's alive, right? And he did. He said, no. He said, they're still trying to get her out the car. So in that moment, she finds out all three of her baby sisters are gone, uh, baby siblings are gone. All three. So she went to Bunky. She could see Christopher's little mousy brown hair with the intubation tube still in his mouth because they couldn't touch him yet because the coroner had pronounced him dead and she had to go identify him. She never got to see Lindy that night. She went straight to a funeral home with the drunk driver. They were at the same funeral home. So 
to think all of this could have been prevented by a simple phone call, putting a plan in place. I don't know the circumstances that, of the drunk driver. I don't know. All I know is he was a 54-year-old man. Who made a very selfish decision. You know, I don't think he sat out that day, though. I don't think he woke up that morning and said, I think I'm going to get drunk. And I think I'm going to go kill three innocent kids and ruin a family's life forever. That's why things and decisions have to be made beforehand. Because once people start drinking, their decision-making process is not the same. And you don't make good and smart decisions to prevent this kind of stuff. And this is just uh, some of my injuries, uh, bilateral carotid artery tears, both carotid arteries were torn. Most people don't survive that. Uh, spleen laceration, collapsed lung, many, many, many broken ribs. <laughs> that took a long time to heal. Sternum fracture, wrist fracture, my ankles and legs were severely broken. Uh, I've had to retire from my job since then. I know I look great, but I'm telling you my legs are not, my legs are nothing like they used to be. But you know, this stuff, it heals. I'm, you know, I'm so thrilled to be walking. I did not like the wheelchair life. I was in a wheelchair for three months. But you know, this stuff heals. But my heart. I will be a broken hearted mama until I take my last breath. You know, grief, the way I can describe it, it feels like I have an invisible knife in my heart all the time. It's, it's grief is, it's annoying. It's, it's like an aggravating fly. It's like, it, it just never leaves you. It's just, it buzzes around constantly. You know, I love these kids. I, I, I love them. They, they were my people. And it is just, grief is just, it's hard. My days are hard every day. From something that could have been so easily prevented. And this is, uh, some of Marissa's injuries, uh, left femur fracture, dislocated spine, C6, C7 disc bulge, left foot sprain, right hand fracture, uh, C1 and C2 ligament strain, and severe whiplash. She is back playing softball, uh, trying to uh, be a walk-on at college. She Physically, she has recovered pretty much uh, but her heart is broken. I mean, can you imagine going through that? I mean, our, the school that the kids went to, I mean, Christopher would be a senior this year. There's like 15 in his class. It's a small, small school. My children have been involved with this school for 30 years. It's like a, it's like a family. It was just such a devastating loss for so many people. You know, the the effects of this go on and on and on for something that could have been prevented. So this is January third of twenty. 22. Crash was on December 17th. They had to figure out when we're going to have the funeral. They didn't know how long I was going to be in the hospital because I was in ICU for several days. So they collaborated with the doctors and they settled on January 4th. 
I did not find out I had lost the kids until December 19th. Crash was on December 17th. For two days, my family had to struggle with how are we going to tell mama? They're in shock. They're grieving. But yet they know I don't know. Can you imagine? I have kids. I have one son that lives in Austin, one that lives in Seattle. Uh, I have Austin, Seattle, and California. So they were all in the process of flying in. And they had to figure out how are we going to tell her this. So on December 17th, the crash. On December 19th, my daughter Katie. We have a very, very strong relationship, very good relationship. She, this is the first time she saw me because she was handling everything. Funeral home, picking out caskets, picking out a place to bury them. I mean, what she did, how she stepped up is just amazing. I mean, she stepped up to the plate so that my husband could be with me and try and take in what had just happened to us. So she walks in the room. I had just had surgery on, my, on one of my legs and the doctors had given the okay. They said, all right, she keeps asking. She's stable enough, y'all gonna have to tell her. So first time I see Katie, she walks in. She's like, mom. I said, where are the kids? And she started to back up and a pastor from the church was pushing her forward and he said, Katie, you, you go ahead, tell her. He said, they cleared it, tell her. She said, Mom, I'm so sorry. She said, they gone. I said, all of them? She said, yeah, Mama, I am so sorry. What could be worth this. Can you imagine? You know, there's two sides. You know, one, you could make the bad decision and cause this for a family. Can you imagine the weight of, of carrying that and doing this to a family? Three beautiful young kids who had their life, they had plans, they, they, all, they each knew what they were gonna do. You know, or you could be the one like us, we were innocent. We did nothing wrong that night. When God puts something on your heart, do not deter from it. Ask Jesus into your heart. You are not guaranteed tomorrow. On December 17th, 2021, I never dreamed these kids would not see December 18th. Do your best to live right, live for God, and do be the very best person you can make good decisions i'm telling you it can happen to you and none of us me y'all are not guaranteed tomorrow for two hours this is my son Cobb. i tell you when we got to the funeral home that day this was at a funeral home. We had the funeral at a church because we knew it wasn't gonna be able to hold the people. We got there at two o'clock. We were behind some closed doors, <clears throat> waiting for the funeral director to come open the doors and let us in. My last memory of my children alive and well was at 7.06 p.m. on December 17th. My last memory is after the game, we went to Subway, got the kids Subway, 
706, we left on the subway. That's the last memory I have of my kids alive and well. So, um, and this is when I seen them next. So we were behind the doors. I'll never forget, it was the most devastating and hopeless feeling I have ever had in my life. Knowing what was behind those doors. Open the doors and walk in, you see three caskets with young children in it. My son rode me. I said, Kyle, bring me to Lindy. Bring me to Christopher. Bring me to Cameron. Back and forth for two hours. Two hours. Lindy, Christopher, Cameron. Lindy, Christopher, Cameron. I tell y'all, I just didn't even know what to do. I was still so broken physically. But nothing compared. To my broken heart. Just imagine. Think of your three. Think of three people. Who you? That's your people. You do life with every day. I mean, three people that every day you in contact with. You do things with. You you hang out with. Your three people. Nine oh one. They here. Nine oh two. They gone. Can you imagine walking into that? And it could have been prevented so easily. I have a zero tolerance for drinking. And I know I live in a real world. I know that that will never happen. You know. But I, I hope that our story can at least let y'all know how important it is to make the proper arrangements and do what needs to be done so that you are never on the road while intoxicated, distracted, you know, answering a text. I mean, our lives, I mean, you know, I was such a hands-on mom. I mean, when I did life with these kids. You know, I was an older mom to these. I kind of raised them a little different than I did my older children. I was an older and wiser mom. I didn't worry so much with the outward things. Like Cameron, she had a little nose ring. I remember when Katie was young, she begged for one and I said, absolutely not. You are not doing that in my house. The, the day Cameron turned 15, I picked her up from school with her birth certificate and we went to get her no drink. Katie asked me, came in the hospital, she said, Mom, is there anything I'm forgetting? That, you know, for the kids, that for the funeral. I said, Katie, make sure Cameron has her no drink. I, you know, I, I love those kids. I didn't, wasn't as concerned with the outward things as I was with the inward things. My concern was their heart. You know, I let them be themselves, you know, to a certain, as, you know, to a certain degree, but I wasn't as concerned with a nose ring or, you know, things that really don't matter in the scheme of things. I tell y'all, I poured every bit of my heart and my soul into these kids. They were my world and who I did life with. I loved them. I will never be the same person that I was. And this is the day of the funeral. Triple funeral, 18 Paul Barrows. Things can happen so quickly. 
please take our story to heart.